39 year old man has been dealing with stomach pain for about 2 years, but it increased in severity and frequency in the last 8 weeks. It is 2 months that the pain is not tolerable <clears throat> anymore and sometimes awakens him at night. A burning pain right below the sternum. He also explained that this is not a consistent pain. It occasionally happens averagely 3 or 4 times a week. The pain works on empty stomach but is usually relieved some minutes after eating or taking over the counter antacids. Then it calms back after 2 or 3 hours. He also says that he is more stressed at work recently. Ooh. And that's because of long working hours. For accelerating his duty and not missing much time, he eats a lot of takeout foods and drink more caffeine to not feel sleepy at work. His past medical history is unremarkable and he takes no medication other than antacids. The vital signs were normal and his previous stool exam was negative for occult blood. There is no sign or lab test that shows anemia as well. Probably we all have faced someone like this person in our family or friends. Not exactly like this, with some minor differences we have sensed this story. This is a really common disorder in general population. Chronic upper abdominal pain which is burning, getting worse on empty stomach, feeling better when eating food, getting worse with stress and caffeine intake, and great response to antacids. All these symptoms guide our mind to a disorder called peptic ulcer disease or an ulcer in the stomach lining or duodenum. Fortunately, there is no alarm symptoms yet like weight loss, bleeding or anemia. His young age and chronicity of the symptoms make the life-threatening conditions less likely, like malignancy. There is a great bond between PUD or peptic ulcer disease and two reasons. The first one is infection, which is commonly Helicobacter pylori, and the other one is constant use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or NSAIDs. This person has no history of consuming NSAIDs, so the most relative reason is Helicobacter pylori. Actually, this is not our final diagnosis. There is never 100% in medicine. As long as we go through the diagnostic way, we should always have other less common differential diagnoses in a corner of our mind. Here is a famous term we should know. And what is it? Functional dyspepsia. Means upper abdominal pain or discomfort persisting for at least 12 weeks, but without any evidence of ulcer on endoscopy. This can happen in several conditions, like gastroesophageal reflux disease, irritable bowel syndrome, and biliary colic caused by gallstone. But they are actually less likely. It is now clear that more than 90% patients with this symptom, means dyspepsia, do not have ulcers, and that the majority of patients with peptic ulcers may have no symptoms even for their entire life. Gastroesophageal reflux disease typically produces heartburn or burning epigastric or mid-chest pain, usually happens after meals and worsening with recumbency. This is actually completely inconsistent with this patient's history. Irritable bowel syndrome is a diagnosis of exclusion, but is suggested by chronic dysmotility symptoms like bloating, cramping, uh, and often relieved with defecation without weight loss or bleeding. Biliary colic caused by gallstone typically has acute onset of severe pain located in the right upper quadrant or epigastrium. Usually is precipitated by meals, especially fatty foods, last 30 minutes to 1 hour with spontaneous resolution and is more common in women. All these possible diagnoses are not in the same line as the patient describes here. The classic symptoms of duodenal ulcers are caused by the presence of acid without food or other materials. Symptoms are typically produced after the stomach is emptied, typically 2-5 to five hours after a meal. They may awaken patients at night when circadian rhythm increases acid production. The pain is typically relieved within minutes by neutralization of acid by food or antacid like calcium carbonate or aluminium magnesium hydroxide. Because the incidence of gastric cancer increases with age, patients older than 45 years who present with new onset dyspepsia should generally undergo endoscopy. Endoscopy is needed for two other types of patients. First, those patients who have alarm symptoms like weight loss, recurrent vomiting, anemia or dysphagia. And second are those who have failed to respond to empiric treatment. 
When the endoscopy is performed, we can see any type of ulcer in the stomach and duodenum. Besides this, we can also take a biopsy sample to exclude the possibility of malignancy. And this biopsy can be used for urea testing and determine if there is any active Helicobacter pylori infection in the stomach. In younger patients with no alarm symptoms like this patient, an acceptable strategy is to do a non-invasive H. pylori antibody test to know if the patient is infected or not. Helicobacter pylori is more common in older patients, in lower society economy groups and in developing countries. The two most common tests are the urea burst test and checking H. pylori antibodies. This is a suggested strategy to test for infection and if present, we need to treat it with an antibiotic regimen, such as clarithromycin and amoxicillin, as well as acid suppression with a proton pump inhibitor. The reason for treating infection with antibiotics is that eradication of the infection will largely prevent recurrence. And if symptoms persist or alarm features develop, the prompt upper endoscopy is indicated in this patient.